Do you think he's wearing fishnets under those slacks? God, I hope so. <laughs> I bet Misha hopes so as well. <laughs> One more steam in a cup of hot test I say testimony. Testicles. Exactly. Indeed. Witness, hurry the fuck up. I will give you one more chance to testify. What happened that day at Trebion between yourself and the victim? Ahem. Ties to the victim. Uh, since we're on a thing, I'm gonna save again. Yep. Yeah, I loaned out cash. About a hundred thousand dollars. That day, we was due to have a little chat. The kid had hit his payback date, see? So anyway, he tells me he's got no way to pay up. I'm about to flatten the guy when he starts screaming. Yes, I won half a million bucks. He got lucky, you know, real lucky. If that waitress hadn't done what she'd done, everything would have been over. Over. Hmm. There we go. That's the one letter I'm messing up on. Over. Now, I see that the principal amount you loaned to Mr. Eld was 50k. Yeah, well, you've got the vig to take into account. Interest builds up fast, you know. That's faster than fast. 100k, $100,000 is twice as principal. And the repayment deadline was December 3rd, the day of the incident in question. Yeah, he was one lucky kid, and 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 he and he got murdered, and he got murdered. That's very lucky. He got murdered right in the face hole. Yeah. He got that half a million just in time. So I have no reason to kill the kid. And if I ain't got no motive, you ain't got no case. His motive. Hmm. He has to have one, and I know exactly what it is. Nice. So, um... <clears throat> he... hit Viola with his, uh, scooter. <laughs> uh, this is his scooter. It's a piece of shit because... Well, Viola hit it with her car because he just pulled out like a moron, and she received right. a head injury. Um... And she's also the granddaughter of a big old mob boss. Uh, here's the medical bills. Ah, I see. Why the hell was it so expensive? Because she apparently died? So it costs a million dollars if you die? No, she's, a, she's like alive, but she's like, she told us like, I sort of died that day. Right. And the cranial surgery costs like a gajillion dollars. Well, it's America, so I guess it's Japanifornia. Yeah. It's Japanifornia, so... Dollars. It's the corrupt judicial system and the corrupt medical system. Right, right, I see. Alright. Uh, I think So, I think, go to the end where he says, like, I have no motive. I think that was afterwards. Oh, yeah. But I think, let's still press everything. He might, I, he didn't say anything about penalizing anymore. Yeah. Do you have any way of paying the loan back? The fool was a gambler. He said he couldn't give it up till he landed a big win. So I agreed to help him. Help him? You? I kept hitting him with ideas for ways he could get a big win. But the guy kept losing. So you were helping him for his sake or yours? When do compromise? You help me, I help you. You scratch my back, I something, something back scratch. What's the <laughs> difference, huh? Something, something back scratch. I don't believe this. Nick, would anyone really loan money to someone they thought was unreliable? Like, for example, if it were you, I'd only loan you five bucks, like, max. I'm glad you think I'm unreliable, Maya. I got you acquitted of the fake murder charges twice. Well, she didn't say she wouldn't loan you anything. Hmm. Thanks a lot, Maya. So how much were you expecting him to pay you back on that day? What do you think? The whole package! A hundred thousand, including interest. That's a real heavyweight punch. Once a client misses a repayment, you come up a whole loan in. You wanna make it in my world, that's all you've gotta know. 
how many times had Mr. Oak been late with his repayments? Once. And how much was he supposed to pay back every month? Fifty bucks! Huh. Sounds like Mr. Oak was in a real sticky spot. Yeah, fifty dollars a month. He'd never pay that huge loan off. Well, how long would that take? Fifty bucks a month? Oh, yeah. Yeah, never mind. That's... Holy shit. But I mean, does that mean he'd never, like, is that how much he was expected to pay back a month? Yeah. Or how much he was paying back? That's how much he was paying back, I think, until he said he couldn't. Oh, okay. Because, like, <coughs> I don't know, just pay 50 bucks every day and, like, till you die. Easy. Mm. Not every day, every every month until you die. Fine. Yeah. Because $50 a month for what was originally 50k. Yeah. Is a thousand months. Which I don't think yeah. is how it, I think is still longer than people live for. Yeah. Well, twelve months in a year, and then you multiply that by. So yeah, and, unless you live to a hundred, and and you pay it from when you're born, you need you need basically a hundred, a bit under a hundred years to pay that or something. Yeah. Anyway. How much do you have left on his debt? You want it in round figures? About a uh, hundred thousand bucks. That's the whole amount. We're talking about a guy who had fifty-eight cents in his wallet. What? <sighs> <sighs> okay. You're telling me he wasn't even gonna pay for the coffee? He certainly seems to have been a brave man, this Mr. Elg. That guy was smooth, I tell you. Real smooth. Smooth like a baby's butt crack. Like my spray tan. <laughs> You'll have your money in less than five minutes. That's what he says to me. That guy then calls me the tender tiger. He was skating on thin ice with me. You're on thin fucking ice, my pedigree chum. And I'll be under it when it breaks. Now fuck <laughs> off. I was switching between the two accents. Get it, I guess. Was that because he... The guy won the lottery. It was his last chance at a big win. And, then, and you can confirm that this is the ticket in question? That's it. The Millionaire Radio Show starts at 1.30pm and runs for 10 minutes. That fixes the time you two met with some accuracy. And the whole scene was acted out again 30 minutes later. All that so Mr. Kudo would see it. I can still see the kid's face now. I ain't ever no I ain't never gonna forget it. Forget, forget about, about it. Hey. hey. Same brain cell. Was there anyone else in the restaurant at the time? <sighs> I don't remember. If there was no one there, I'll wear that ridiculous tire shirt for a month. <laughs> Remind me to check. Mr. Armstrong, Maggie, and if I'm right, Viola Cadaverina were all there at the time. So the victim had intended to repay you from his last lottery winnings from the beginning? Seemed that way to me. B but you wouldn't normally expect to win the lottery, would you? Ha! The undying belief that your next role will end the worst loser, I say the worst losing streak you ever had. That's what defines a true gambler. It makes it sound so cool. Don't be tempted, Nick. You haven't got the willpower for it. I've been doing Toadmire for the past like two, three weeks, so now every time you speak, I'm expecting to hear that. Do you want me to do no, it? No, don't do it. <laughs> I, it's why I brought you on, so people wouldn't have to hear. Don't be tempted, Nick! You haven't got the willpower for it! We'll do it. All I know is, the kid took a shot, and he got lucky in the end. The waitress? You mean... The girl with the glasses in the defendant's chair! Who else could I mean? The queen? The pope? It wasn't the pope? <laughs> if she hadn't gotten in the way, things would have been better, big, better, boom, over and done with! Pirelli Tigre. Yeah. 
Maybe I should push a little bit on this. Friggin' buy Pirelli's expensive fucking loans! <laughs> <laughs> buy Pirelli's expensive fucking loans! What do you mean things would have been over and done with? Are you all there or what? Dumbass, I'm talking about the cash! I was there to get my hundred thousand bucks back! That's all! I'm a businessman! It was all coming together! Oh yeah, it's all coming together! <laughs> Before that waitress got in the way! Kronk! Yeah. Hmm. As far as I can tell from the witness's testimony, other than recalling his loan, Mr. T Mr. Tigger had no motive for killing the victim. Witness, you will amend your testimony to reflect what you just said. Yes, the tiger's motive, huh? Now we get to use it. Yeah. There we go, that's the one. That is the one. Chuck the medical bill in his big orange hot cheeto face. Hey, uh, Tigger, you know what 50,000 is, uh, half of? Or 500,000? Yeah. It's half of this. So you just the music stopped. Yeah, that means we win. Yeah. If if the music didn't stop, it means we did the wrong thing. Yeah. So you just intended to get back the one hundred thousand dollars Mr. Elg owed you, correct? I loaned the guy the cash, so that's my right. Unfortunately for Mr. Elg, one hundred thousand dollars wasn't enough to cover it, was it? Huh? About six months ago, you were involved in a traffic accident, weren't you? An accident involving a car and a scooter, in which a young woman was injured. She was taken to the hospital where she underwent surgery. Where, where did you guess you get all this info? These medical papers document the treatment of the young woman in question. According to these, her operation cost one million dollars. Payment for these expensive was due in December of last year and was paid in full. One million dollars? A preposterous sum! Someone should sue these HMOs! Someone should sue these homos! Yeah. <laughs> ha! No one would pay, I say, no one would pay a bill like that. If the medical association wouldn't got, got wind of it, the hospital would wind up as dead as the maw, I say, as dead as the maw. But Mr. Tigger had no choice but to pay. Because his very life depended on it. What? Because <laughs> Mafia, remember? Oh, yeah. Order! Order! So you say his life depended on it? Anyway, you say his life depended on it, Mr. Wright? Indeed it did. Simply because the injured one was, one was none other than Viola the Corpse Lady. Yeah. Her surname in Japanese was Corpse. Nice. Or to do with corpses, I don't remember the actual word. Did you say, I say, did you say Cadaverini? I say, did you say? Yeah. G Bruto Cadaverini, the most Japanese Italian man in the world. <laughs> Mob boss in charge of all the underworld activities in the city. And doting grandfather to his precious Violetta, also known as Viola Cadaverini. Nice fake name, bro. Yeah. Your life was in danger unless you paid compensation to the boss, correct? Makes sense. You were desperate to acquire the one million dollars Cadaverini demanded of you. So desperate, in fact, that you decided to sacrifice Glenn L to summon a monster, I mean, to pay your debt. <laughs> to, yeah, just sacrifice him for to get a demon to pay it for you. Yeah. That's why you're orange, because you're actually a demon. I knew it. Is he spray tan or is that his skin? He's probably spray tanned. What? Order! What do you say to that, witness? It sounds awkward saying it three times. Yeah. It's a nice little fairy tale, Trat. God, you're giving him an actual brain malfunction. Yep. But even if the witness did, did need a million dollars, that doesn't tie him to Mr. L. I say Mr. L's murder. Mr. Elg only owed him $100,000 and had no hope of repaying it anyway. Yeah, that guy wasn't worth my shit. I knew that you were going to say that. Hey. I don't think so. In fact, the opposite is true. The opposite, I say the opposite. 
Lending money with no hope of ever seeing repayment would normally be bad for business, but in this case, the very fact that Glen Elg had no way to repay the money is crucial. Money? Do you know where you're going with this, Nick? Nope. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> this is why I would only give you five dollars. <laughs> yeah, but... I've gotten- I've won cases with no- with like nothing before. Remember the DL6 incident? I cross-examined a fucking parrot! <laughs> that's not a- that's not a joke. <laughs> he unraveled the entire case from parrot. Nice. You got to think outside the box. No, think outside the box, Maya. Like your sister says with her big titties. Yeah. Outside the box? It's very straightforward. Mr. Tigger wasn't after the $100,000 at all. It seems you have a logical conclusion for this theory, Mr. Wright. Would you care to share it with the rest of the class? Yeah. What exactly was Mr. Tigger after? Um, it was the lottery ticket, wasn't it? I suppose so. Do we even have it? Ah, here it is. Oh. What is the meaning of this, Mr. Wright? It's evidence that Trot has. N oh, wait, no, I remember what it is. I'm. I. You was an idiot. You know, let's let this dialogue play out because right. I know what it is. That Trot has no idea. I say, no idea what he's doing. What? What do you mean? You're way off track, Trot. That evidence is irrelevant. But why? It's literally relevant. It's. It's not. Since when did he have the right to dish out penalties? I know exactly what it is. Are you alright, Nick? Mr. Tigger needed one million dollars. Recovering a loan worth a hundred thousand dollars wasn't enough. Besides, Elk had the means to make that kind of money if he wanted to. There's the hint! Why? Uh, he worked for that cool robot lady? Yeah, and he developed one computer virus, potentially worth millions of dollars. Ah, I see. And that thing was on the table, during the murder. Right. Glenn Elg was a programmer, a highly skilled programmer. That skill was the collateral Mr. Elg put up in order to borrow the money. Care to explain how skill can be used as collateral to s secure a loan trot? You use that skill to make the collateral, you dumb shit! He had the skill to create a computer virus, and so he did. A virus known as da na 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 can't touch this. Oh my god. A computer virus? What does one of those do? Bruh. A computer virus is a program that wreaks havoc on the insides of a computer. To be fair, the judge is also the first person who was like, Mr. Wright, I have one question. What's a digital camera? Okay. A computer <laughs> 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 I guess the beard is the only part of his honor that is from the Stone Age. Yep. <laughs> I'll explain later. Where- how does he get, like, where does- if he doesn't know what a computer is, where does he get the schedule for, like, his... cases? Yeah. How does he get paid? Is it in bags of cash with, like, a dollar sign on them? <laughs> a virus like MC Bomber would be worth several million on the black market. <coughs> Mr. Tigger, you couldn't have cared less about the $100,000, isn't that right? <coughs> All you cared about was one thing, the virus Digimon. Yeah. I wonder what kind of Digimon <coughs> MC Bomber is. <laughs> <laughs> on the day of the murder, Mr. Tigger's sole intention was to get his hands on the CD. Glen Elg had no way of paying back the $10,000 and Mr. Tigger knew it, but then a miracle happened. The kind that Mr. <coughs> the kind of the kind that Mr. Tigger would prefer to say never happened, but he can't, and neither can I. The lottery, I say, the lottery win. Exactly. At the eleventh hour, Mr. Elg won half a million dollars on the lottery, which left Mr. Tigger with no way of getting his hands on the all-important cadet. At least, no legitimate way. Why is he Salt Bay? Poison Bay. Yeah. So we resort to illegitimate means. 
Cocaine Bay. <laughs> that's cra- I ah, say, that's Cray Cray, baby. Oh, no. <laughs> he murdered Glenelg and then made his next move to frame Maggie Bird for the crime. Mr. Tigger posed as Glen Elg, while Viola Cadaverini played the role of Miss Bird. Then they reenacted the whole thing in order to establish a witness. The witness being the one we all heard testify yesterday, Mr. Victor Kudo. He's, he's in the audience and he yells it out whenever his name is mentioned. Yeah. Like I said, try that's crazy. No one could pull off a stunt like that. For starters, there's no way the chef could have been kept, I say, kept in the dark about it. He's in on it. Cool. <clears throat> but Mr. Armstrong was in on it from the very beginning. Have you forgotten already, Mr. Godot? Mr. Armstrong owed the witness money, too. Half a million dollars, in fact. He had no choice but to go along with Mr. Tigger's plan. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Feel good. You put on a good show, Spikey. Huh? If you want to stay alive in the loan shark business, you gotta be careful. You saying I dressed up like that kid, created a witness, and framed someone? I did something crazy like that. I leave a trail as bright as my shirt. Time to say it. We're, did. Gonna, we're gonna be asked for him. We're gonna be asked for shit. <coughs> I ain't dumb enough to do something sloppy like that. Or are you? I agree. Y you do? Despite your appearance, you are very careful. That's why you took one more precaution. One more trick to make sure Miss Bird had no way out. What? Another one, Mr. Wright? The judge just thinks this is a soap opera. Yeah. That's why he does this. Interesting. Why don't you fill us all in, try it like you fill in Edgeworth, but dumb tish. What was this trick you say Mr. Tigger performed to frame the accused? Uh... The- the bit where I did the trial already. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh? Shut the fuck up, Godot. <laughs> if he shakes his head again, I'm alt f 4 the game. Okay. <laughs> no. And, what's the relevance of that, right? Um, it's, uh, just a little intro. An intro into what? It seems all of this has been an elaborate trick on the part of the- FUCK! That's enough. This court sees no reason to further prolong the trial, nor is there any need for more time to decide the case against the defendant. This case is extremely clear. I see no room for misinterpretation of uh, the facts. Dumb this idiot. court finds the defendant, Maggie Bird. Well, I guess we lost. Yeah. The accused was surrendered to the court immediately to be held pending trial as a higher court within a month from today's date. That is all. This court is adjourned. Poor Maggie. So we get to go back here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it boots us back to the menu and then we just reload the save. Alright. I agree. Spider took one more precaution. The thing you did was. Do we have any evidence of him dressing up for the trial? Yes! We have this attorney's badge made of cardboard. Yeah, there we go. What on earth is that? What an insult to think anyone could be fooled by such a childish ah. imitation, even though I was fooled by a childish imitation. Consider yourself insulted, Your Honor. Yep. Mr. Tigger, you didn't just pose as the victim on that day in, on the day in question. One month ago, in this very court, you posed as me. Poenix Wright. Ah. Me? That's... that's... The truth. And you're all idiots. You're all fucking idiots. I think the lawyer is supposed to remain professional. I feel like if this happened in real life, the lawyer would be well within their right to be like, everyone who was present on that day, including you, Your Honor, you're fucking moron. Mm. Just gives uh, I him mean, the, the thing is, I feel like Godot probably knew, but he was like, this is helping my case. Yeah. But 
The witness looks nothing like you, Mr. Wright. <clears throat> Though he does have your spiky hair. Although, now that I think about it, it was you, wasn't it? <coughs> With your red skin. And your stupid gold chain. Hot no cheater, doubt man. it was you. Huh, what did you say? Hot cheater, man. Yeah. No doubt it was you. Standing in here, this very court, a mere month ago. The, the Perwinnick's right who put up the most disreputable, shabby defense I had ever seen! <laughs> can you... Can you prove that... I say, can you prove that, Gramps? Prove the attorney who represented the accused here a month ago was this man. Are you prepared to take the stand and testify that it was him? <clears throat> oh, that's you. Uh, uh, hey. Forget about it, yeah? Forget the Huh? I wouldn't do something like that. Not me. Not little old me, ooh woo. Ooh woo. You, you made a mistake, right? It was someone else, huh? Have you no pride, fuckhead? This isn't a matter of pride. In case you didn't know, Trap, here in court we deal with people's lives. I say people's lives. Nurga! Mr. Godot is right. Y Your Honor? Speaking for myself, I'm absolutely convinced. The attorney in question was the witness standing before me now. However, I preside over this court as the judge, with the vested power to hand down a verdict. Someone in my position cannot be swayed by a memory without evidence to support it. I'm pretty sure you can. You're, yeah. you're, you're the judge, aren't you? No! If the defense has no further evidence, I will compulsively save. The circumstances surrounding Mr. Tigger are dubious for sure, but not conclusive. Oh, we've come so far. And in the end, it didn't even matter. Yeah. You say he impersonated. Blah, blah. <clears throat> you say he impersonated Glen Ale. You say he impersonated you. But none of that adds up to a murder charge. You don't have a shred. I say a shred of evidence that proves the witness poisoned the victim's coffee. <laughs> I Phoenix noises. <laughs> and we're funny. <laughs> I can't believe that your voice for Furry Tigger is Bukamon. Yeah. Sucks to be you, right? Well, you were me, so I guess you suck. Yeah. Don't mess with the tiger or you're gonna get mauled. Got that? Darth mauled. Yeah. All we managed to do here is chase him around a bit. But I was so close to getting him to admit his own guilt. Ha! <clears throat> Looks like I won't be needing, I say, won't be needing a refill. I'm Godot. If I just had one more piece of evidence, one more piece of evidence, and maybe I could get Maggie off the hook. This witness's cross-examination is over. You are free to go, Mr. Tigger. Someone's gonna say something. Was it me? Oh, it's Kumshu. Oh my god. Your Honor, sir! Wait! D Detective! Detective Gumshu? Sorry I took so long, pal. Moth has it on the air. I. I. I staked everything on this. My badge? No works. So here it is. My heart's counting on this too, pal. What is it, Detective? Isn't that obvious, pal? It's the final decisive piece of evidence. Nani? Is it time for a recess? 
January 8th, 2.48 p.m. District Co Lobby Court Defendant Lobby Number 1. Sorry it took so long, pal, but I finally got the results from the lab, see? The results? About the prince, pal, from this medicine bottle. So this is the medicine used to treat Glenn Elg's ruptured eardrum. Uh-huh. <coughs> Oh, so, do you know who the prince belonged to now? Do you think I'm some kind of hack detective? Of Maybe. course I know, pal! Shut the fuck up! So? Tell us! The, 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 they're the tigers, right? I knew it. You okay? Yeah. <laughs> I just forgot how to speak. Oh. <laughs> you bet! Harry Potter is dead! <laughs> <laughs> Fear is crystal all over the bottle, see? They're furry tigger's paw prints, all right? That, that's great. We've got him now, Nick. What's wrong with you, stupid? You've probably said a word since Detective Gumshoe got here. I've laid... Oh, he, sorry. He's laid everything on the line for this, Nick. I know. Look, I'm sorry. This, this is kind of hard to say, but it really doesn't make any difference whose prints are on that bottle now. Huh? What? Why not? What we need to produce at this stage in the trial is irrefutable evidence that the ti that the Tigger put poison in Glen Elg's coffee. He's already admitted that he met the victim. The fact that his prints are on this bottle, that really doesn't make any difference now. I knew it. Right. No matter how hard I try, I'm never of any use. Hey, don't be so hard on yourself. This was our last chance to help Maggie. And I've been working on some useless piece of evidence the whole time. This guy, this guy simps for Magatha. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's all right. I'm a real loser. I'm not bra it's not breaking news to me, pal. I'm uh, pretty sure that's Maggie. Um... Detective Gumshoe? He was her mentor on the force. On oh, the force! I see. <laughs> Maggie! You've been working on something for me? Yeah. Sorry I let you down, Maggie. I know you didn't do it. And I'm a detective. We're supposed to be able to prove stuff like that. I'm really sorry. I'll get out of your hair now. Bye! Detective Gumshoe! Wait! He's gone. Isn't there anything we can do now, Nick? I wish there was. Don't you work so hard to get that evidence? If only there was some way I could use it. Covered in furry, covered in furry tiggers, come. Gross. <laughs> what a weird recess. <clears throat> Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. I granted you a recess so you could prepare this decisive evidence you've discovered. Um, yes. <clears throat> Don't keep us all in suspense, try it. Show us. Naturally, we can assume it's evidence that will actually stand up in court. Can't we? I say, can't we? Think, Poenix. Don't let Gumshoe's hard work go to waste. How much more of my time are you gonna waste? I ain't been to no court before. Starts wasting more time. The Is this the friggin' sloth from, from Zootopia? Zootopia. The, in the live action version of uh, the Ace Attorney movie, it was based on the first game, uh, Von Karma accuses Phoenix of stalling, and Phoenix just goes, What? I'm. Not so. It's like shut the fuck up. Yeah. Phone <laughs> conference is like yes you are. Uh, it was great. These lawyers sure know how to blow things out of proportion. We do sure know how to blow things. Yeah. And by things I mean Edgeworth. What? Yeah. That's just a lawyer thing to do. No doubt. The, every lawyer sucks off Edgeworth. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. No doubt, given the nature of the evidence, it will speak for itself. Nevertheless, you will talk us through it, Mr. Wright. Well, and I can't prove anything new with 
we don't need to prove anything with this new evidence, but I'm gonna compulsively save anyway. Mm. I'm really backed into a corner here, but maybe if he thinks he's got me beat, he'll let his guard down a bit. Oh, I think I know what we're gonna do. Mm. Don't keep us waiting any longer, Mr. Wright. Present this final decisive piece of evidence to the court. So, we have this medicine bottle. Yeah. We also have the actual poison bottle. Right. If he lets his guard down, what do you think is gonna happen? Is he gonna... Oh, I'm not sure, but... Could it have been something about them getting swapped? Sort of. So this is, in fact, ear medicine. Let's show it. This is the defense's final piece of evidence. Isn't that the victim's? Your Honor. Naturally, the court is already aware of the contents of this bottle. However, interesting new information has come to light. We have clearly identified some fingerprints on it. Fingerprints belonging to you, Mr. Tigger! Oh, that's you. What? But, Mr. Wright, what conclusion are you hoping to draw from this new information? Everyone in here knows what everyone in here knows what this bottle contains, except one man. One person in this courtroom should theoretically be in the dark. My prince on that pansy-looking bottle? Is that what you're saying? Well, what the hell is in it anyway? <laughs> a phony trial, a phony lawyer, and phony clues. Everything about this case has been phony. Seems like the perfect excuse for some phony evidence. Yeah. You know what we're doing now? What are we doing? Because Tigger doesn't know what's in it. Yeah. Mr. Tigger, this is the decisive piece of evidence that will prove your guilt. Oh, we're tricking him into admitting it? Yep. Why? Because it contains the poison! This bottle contains potassium cyanide. And he's gonna say, it can't, because blah blah blah. Yeah. P potassium cyanide? The poison used to murder Mr. L, your honor. The victim's killer used this very bottle. <laughs> and on this bottle, Mr. Tigger, we found your fingerprints. I don't think, if this were me, I don't think I could keep a straight face. Yeah. Well, how do you explain that? Dipshit. <laughs> You know that? Nani? You ain't never gonna get this to stick. It's just making me laugh now. You think a cheap bluff like that's gonna fool the tiger? A, a bluff? I can see straight through you, Phoenix rat. That ain't the bottle with the cyanide in it. No, no, it's definitely this one. This is the bottle we found that we found the traces of poison in. Or you're gonna get ripped to shreds! That's nah, definitely this one. The cyanide bottle was brown and it was made of glass, you <laughs> dumbass! <laughs> <laughs> that cheap piece of trash don't look nothing like it! Is that so, Mr. Furry Tigger? He might as well have said, that isn't the bottle I used to poison him. <laughs> the poison for Glenn. Glenn's poison. The mm -hmm. poison chosen specifically for Glenn. Glenn's poison. That poison? Yes, that poison. Yes. <laughs> Got him at last. What? Why's everyone gone quiet? I said that bottle... Is this the bottle you're referring to? Yeah, that's it. That's the bottle the cyanide was in. We usually gonna find my prints on that bottle. Don't let that cozy looking suit fool you people. That lawyer's just playing games. He's playing fucking Call of Duty. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him, Mr. Prosecutor. Tell that guy where to go. Uh, I need a drink. You 
still haven't figured it out, I say. Still haven't figured it out. Don't you realize what you just said, you dumb fuck? Uh, what I said? What did I just say? You were summoned to this court for the first time earlier today. If you really had nothing to do with the murder, you shouldn't have known all the little details. <clears throat> for instance, you shouldn't have known what kind of bottle the potassium cyanide was in. Uh, uh. But just now, you s you, f you done fucked up, son! You described the exact bottle used by the killer to hold the poison. I'd be, I'd be, I would be laughing the entire time. I would not be able to keep my composure. Yeah. You don't know who you're messing with. I'm the tiger. I control millions of dollars on the black market. Then why don't you use some of it to pay off the debt that you have? Also, why did he just admit to being in the black market? I don't know. You think I'm gonna let some jumped up suit get the better of me? Go play Call of Duty, you dumb bitch! Sure, the last piece of evidence was phony. But that's just what you deserve. The phony trial with a phony lawyer. It was all played out by you. The biggest phony of all. Nice. <laughs> exactly. Did he shadow the lights with his voice? I guess so. What's going on? Uh, I guess I'll be the bailiff. Um, <clears throat> looks like a blackout. <laughs> <coughs> well done, Trat. Beep boop. I saved my 17th cup of coffee just for- Did he throw the fucking coffee at me in the dark? <laughs> save, I uh, save, aim. save it. Yeah. He can probably Listen. see with that mask. All right, yeah. While you watch the police, while you watch the police restrain, I uh, say restrain your prey. That's a cool line. Hmm. Mr. Wright, you caught a tiger by his toe. <laughs> I'm not gonna read the rest of that. Nah, fuck it, I have to. Mr. Wright, you caught a tiger by his toe. But if this one hollers, he won't be let go. Judge, shut the fuck up. Now then, how are things going with Mr. Tigger, Godot, Mr. Godot? He's being arrested on the suspicion of the murder of Glen L, Your Honor. Fortunately for us, we managed to rectify a very grave error that we made because we're fucking stupid. Yeah. Miss Bird was found guilty in the absence of a genuine defense attorney. Yes, she was, and you're all stupid. And in the absence of genuine, I say genuine evidence. But the tiger made one mistake. Indeed. He very nearly got away with everything if it wasn't for that one slip of the tongue. Furry Tigger is truly a frightening criminal. Ha! The truly frightening one. Is that defense attorney over there? Damn, a Good compliment. Dog. Yeah. Well, I'm now in a position to deliver my verdict. This court finds the defendant, Maggie Bird. The position is 69. Yes, it is. Slams the gavel on the pussy. Yeah. Good let job. Me, let me see that gavel see. Yeah. <coughs> that is all. This court is adjourned. All right, we have an hour left, so it's probably enough time to do something of the next episode. Okay. But like I said, we might go on for just a bit longer. If that's fine with you. Uh, we'll see. Yeah. January 8th, 4.10pm. We were in there for six hours. Rip. <laughs> Mr. Wright! I... I'm at a loss for words. Thank you, sir. Congratulations, Maggie. I was so mad when Mr. Wright landed me in all that trouble a month ago. But now I feel like I can forgive him. But I didn't do anything! Shut up! It wasn't me, it was the Tigger! Look, Nick, in, in the doorway. 
Detective Gumshoe. Oh. Guess I'll be uh, heading up then. See you around, pal. W wait! What? Detective Gumshoe. Uh, oh yeah. Congratulations, Maggie. Thanks. Mm. Mm. I, I, I knew you were innocent all along, see? <clears throat> Why didn't you say that in your testimony then? Huh? Oh. Well, I was, uh... Well, I guess I'll be hitting nothing. See you around! Bruh. <laughs> Detective, get the fuck back! Oh my god! Maggie! Why are you being so hard on him? He busted his butt for you! He busted a nut for you! He did! It's thanks to him that we got the medication bottle! That wasn't even of any use! Yeah, it was! Shut up! It won the trial for us! Shut your ass! But... It's only because Mr. Wright used it so cleverly. Yeah, but who got it for us? True. Detective Gumshoe is just running around in circles! Poor guy. Looks like she Looks still like isn't... Looks like she still isn't... Oh, it's, it's me. Oh, sorry, it's wrong person. <laughs> Looks like she still isn't ready to forgive him. Can't you put in a good word for him, Nick? Yeah, Maya's right. I should help Gumshoe out. It's clear he needs it. Uh, Maggie? I'm gonna compulsively save in case I fuck this up. Yep. Because <clears throat> unlike in the actual courtroom, instead of being penalized until you get it right, uh, for the ones where you have to cheer people up with evidence, if you get it wrong, they'll just be like, eh, thanks for trying, and then it continues. Yep. You know, Detective Gumshoe's been really wor- you know, Detective Gumshoe's been really worried about you through all this. I wanted to believe that, sir. But on that first day of the trial, he practically gave the judge a free pass to lock me up. No, he gave a shitty testimony so that I'd be able to, like, break it apart. Yeah. You didn't have any choice, Maggie. He's a Maggie. Uh, he's, a, he's a Maggie. He's a detective. <laughs> he has to report the facts. He doubted me. That's why. He thought I might have done it. Maggie, you were a cop. You know how this works. Got to prove to her that Gumshoe really cares about her. I know. I'll give her a little present to celebrate her freedom. But one piece of evidence I haven't used, this second bento box of rice and sausages. Take that! Take that! Here you are. A present to celebrate your freedom. So aggressive. Yeah. Th that's... A present from Detective Gumshoe, made with a ton of love. He said you lost weight, and he was worried about you. D D Detective Gumshoe? Oh, I... I actually really like... Cleaners. <laughs> <laughs> Especially his. Yeah. Uh, did you guys hear that? I'm pretty hungry myself, you know. Yeah, the trial dragged on a bit today, didn't it? We went on for fucking six hours. Um, is it okay if I eat this now? No! Bitch. <laughs> Aww. Aww. So, how is it, Maggie? I'm really excited about you eating lunch. It's really good. She's eating the lunch that... Gum she made for her. I know, it's just funny looking looking at Maya being like, Oh my god, she's eating lunch, let's fucking go! Yeah, eat that fucking lunch! <laughs> so the case of Phony versus Genuine comes to an end. The false allegations surrounding Maggie have all been cleared up. I'm not advancing this, it's happening on its own. Oops, bumped the mic. Yeah. And who knows, maybe a whole new world of her life is about to start. Yeah. Oh, I can show you my ass! Yeah. <laughs> we did it! Yay! This is a flashback. Ooh! Oh. I was hoping it'd be a new one. Sad. Well, no, it's it it's a new episode, but this is clearly a flashback. Oh. Is that dude in the background about to chuck someone off a bridge? Yes. Also, that, that fucking suit, Edgeworth. That's it's so fancy. That's Phoenix's boyfriend. Yeah, I'm aware. Okay. <laughs> Save We've your progress. We've been talking about him this whole time. Yep. 
Good old Edukun. Yeah. Alright, well, let's get started.